If you're curious to see what Coda can do, then you've come to the right place. In this video, this is going to be the first in a new series where we are replicating an existing system that we currently have working for us and working well in Airtable. And piece by piece, we're going to bring that over into Coda and see if we can replicate the exact same functionality. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help people to organize and automate their businesses and lives. If that's something you're into, swing by our website and check out the different resources we've put together. Uh, there are a lot of different things out there, some free, some not, that will help you on that path. But without further ado, let's jump into this and just get into our project here in Coda. So the first step of this project, this is again, this is a system that we currently have in Airtable and we're building a replica in Coda and we're going to examine where is Coda strong, where is Coda perhaps weak, and I'm going to let you know step every, or rather every step of the way where I think things are adding up. So the first step of this whole phase or this whole system is people reach out and say they're interested in meeting with us. This is the current system that we have built in Airtable. So we use Calendly to do that, right? So Calendly, if you're not familiar with it, is a way that you can allow people to schedule time on your calendar. And uh, it's, it's a great app, relatively inexpensive, and you can embed it on a website. And so that's what we have used for our website. People can go in there and request a consultation if they're interested in having us build a solution for them. And so that is the first step. And so what we need to do is gather that data that comes in from that and put it into a database. All right, so this is a, I mean, as, as I've just described it, this is a two table solution, right? We need to not only track the contact data, that is the, the person who signs up, their email, phone number, and their answers to some qualifying questions. Not only do we need to capture that data, we also need to capture the consultation data. And the reason that these are two different data sets is because consultations uh, can occur over and over again with the same contact, right? It's very possible and happens all the time that someone will schedule more than one consultation with us and we need to track that data and link it, connect it to the other data set. So consultations need to connect to our contacts. So how do we do that? Let's start with the data. So the first thing we do is we create a folder inside of Coda and that is our data folder. Inside of this folder, I'm only going to create new tables. So each little subsection here is going to be a table of data. And this is going to be the raw data in its entirety. And then in another folder, I will look at my workflow. And we'll get to that in a minute. So right now, again, we have our first two tables, contacts and consultations. So our first table, contacts here, you'll see that we've got a few fields. We have a first name, we have a last name, an email address, what company do you work for, what's your website, uh, you know, what's the monthly revenue. These are all qualifying questions that occur when the person books the call. But then we get over to the far side here and you'll see that we have a recent time for the consultation and also a recent type for the consultation. And I'll tell you exactly why I built these in a minute. But everything else here is data that's filled out at the time of the uh, booking. Now this table interacts with our consultations table. And so here we have a link. So right here we have, we're actually telling it, hey, this consultation occurs at this time and with this person. And so there's a, a linked relationship or a, a connection to the contacts table here. And so I can click here and I'll see a list of all the different, cons, uh, all the different contacts in our database. Then of course, this is you know, tracking the consultation type we're looking at the insights that this person wants to get. That way, when we head into this consultation, we have a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be talking about. We can take notes on that consultation and determine an outcome. Now, I like to rank these outcomes as follows. I say good fit, bad fit, no show, first offense, and no show. Now, the idea here is if they're a good fit, maybe they want to receive a proposal. Maybe there's uh, another step in the pipeline. They're going to get moved on to the next stage in our process. Maybe they're a bad fit, in which case we want to say, hey, this person you know, wasn't a fit for our services. Maybe they don't show up. And I like to break this into two different types, no-show, uh, first offense, and then no-show. I use first offense in the case where somebody has, uh, this is the first time that they've failed to show up to a meeting. And then I build an automation on the back end of this that sends them an email and says, hey, sorry, you missed it. 
reschedule here if you're interested. The other no-show has no automation because I'm not gonna send that same email over and over again. So if they book multiple times and fail to show up, that's it. We're just gonna you know, stop that one where it is and say no-show. So these are my four different options. And then as I mentioned, certain actions might take place if good fit is in order. So you'll notice that when I select good fit, suddenly I have the ability to click on send proposal or make prospect. Now we're gonna talk about building automations here in Coda in uh, further detail in the future. Right now what we're focused on is collecting this data and getting it in our database so that we can show up to those consultations when they were scheduled and know who we're gonna be talking to. So for that, we're going to uh, turn to Zapier. And so really quickly, looking over at Zapier, we have built an automation that says, well, it's a three-step automation. First, it says when a new invitation or a new invitee is booked in Calendly. When that occurs, then we will uh, manipulate the date and time because we wanna make sure we pass the date and time of the event in a way that Calendly, or excuse me, in a way that Coda recognizes. And then we're gonna upsert a row in Coda. If you're not familiar with upsert, it essentially means that we're going to find a row. If it already exists, we will update it. And if it does not already exist, then we are going to create it. All right, that is what we're doing. And you'll notice that when we do this, when we customize this row, we are going to only be customizing the contacts table. And so you might ask yourself, well, if all we're doing is, is upserting a row in the contacts table, then how is that new consultation going to get recorded? And this is where Coda is very different from any other relational database software that we've built with in the past. Here, we actually get to build automations inside of Coda. And so we built a rule, and this rule says the following. When a new, uh, when new data is entered into the contacts table, specifically when uh, the most recent time is updated, which will occur every time that the previous automation runs, right? So when that occurs, then we will be uh, creating a new row in the consultations table that connects to the, the, uh, the contact in the first trigger here. So we're actually able to build an automation inside of Coda, which makes it a really unique uh, type of program to use. All right, so moving on from here, let me uh, go ahead and uh, just give this a little test run. And so let's give it a, a test and see how exactly it plays out. So if I were to go into our, um, our website and book a, a fake consultation, let me go ahead and do that. And I'll just use my own information here. All right, we'll go ahead and schedule that event. Now, while we're doing that, we would expect to have these automations run in the background on their own. Now, something that I have noticed with Coda is when I flip immediately back to Coda, I don't see uh, the data automatically in all cases. Sometimes I do need to refresh my page. Of course, having said that, this one came in perfectly. So we see that the first name, last name, all of this data was mapped appropriately. And then this is the last part of, or, the, or a part of that automation. We're also bringing in the recent time and the recent uh, type. Of, uh, of consultation that was scheduled because we have multiple types of consultation. Some are with clients, some are with prospects, etc. And so then what we would expect to see happen is with or inside of Coda, right, we then have um, the ability to create this consultation and relate it back to that contact all with that interior or internal automation inside of Coda itself. So this is definitely one of those areas where I would suggest if you're interested in Coda and automation, check this out and uh, just explore it a little bit. It's really cool that you can actually build some automation inside of your database and not have to rely on third-party software like Zapier or Integromat to do all of that for you. Now, the last piece of this before we sign off on this video, now that we've got the data organized appropriately, we also want to build ourselves a view that helps us see what we need to see exactly when we need to see it. And Coda really does some cool stuff. It allows us to present this in a really neat way. Specifically, what I'm looking at here is a specific view, and you'll see that it's this detail view here. So I'm taking a view of the consultations table data, 
and I've applied a couple things to it. So first off, there's a filter that only shows consultations that are occurring for today. Now, as of the filming of this video, it's the 17th of January. And so only the 17th of January are showing up here. And you'll see that I can cycle through them and I get to see all the information that that person put together. Now, I, you can then further customize these cards. And as you can see here, I have, uh, I've done just that to include certain things. Right, so I've included contact, contact insights, but then there are other data points that I say I don't want to necessarily bring in here. I can also apply a lot of formatting so I can add color and, and additional functionality to this as well. But ultimately what I want to be able to do is hop on a call with this person, take some notes that relate directly to this call, and then if they're a good fit, I want to suggest that they're a good fit, and then if there's a next step that's gonna be following up, I can push it right here. And we'll get more into this in our next video in this series. We're gonna go ahead and stop it here, but I'd love to hear any and all feedback that you have so far into this project. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week, we also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.